Hi, I want to share with you today one of my favorite quotes, one that's very meaningful to me and also that I think is very relevant to our times right now and also has some profound implications. This quote comes from Alexander Solzhenitsyn. Alexander Solzhenitsyn was a novelist, a short story writer, historian in the Soviet Union and uh, was a Marxist-Leninist captain of the Red Army. And in that time, he also got arrested under Stalin's regime and brought to the gulags. The gulags were forced labor camps, and he wrote a book called the Gulag Archipelago, telling the story of how people across um, society got snatched up and put through these camps. 14 million people were put through these camps, and one and a half million people died in these camps during all of Stalin's regime. 40 to 60 million people died, and a lot of those were just direct choices of Stalin. Dark times that he was highlighting here. So here's the quote. If only we were all so simple. If only there were evil people somewhere insidiously committing evil deeds, and it were necessary only to separate them from the rest of us and destroy them. But the line dividing good and evil cuts through the heart of every human being. And who is willing to destroy a piece of his own heart? And again, that's Alexander Solzhenitsyn from the Gulag Archipelago. <laughs> this reflects um, something that is uh, alive, I think, in our culture right now. It's We're not sending people to forced labor camps um, right now yet i don't know um but there i recognize in our culture right now this desire to exile the evil people and find out who's the evil people and we're going to put them over there and then of course we're the good people and then um and there's also a thing here that's very human which is a real resistance to recognizing the evil in ourself and i don't want to be treated like that it's clearly this is how we treat those other people who are evil and there's a couple pieces there that's interesting, right? Because like, we get ourselves into a trap um, because we can't get rid of all the evil people. It's not a possibility. <laughs> um, and if you like follow that to its logical conclusion to try to win something by eliminating your enemy, then well, the logical conclusion of that is genocide. And this only happened 60, 70 years ago or so. And so how do we get out of this? Well. One thing we can do is figure out how to forgive evil people and not try to destroy them. Or we could recognize our own internal capacity for evil and find peace with that. And I think that the latter will support the former if we're able to recognize that we have the seeds of evil inside of us, then that allows us to find forgiveness for ourselves, and then also forgiveness for others. And then, of course, then not try to destroy them, because that's the part we're trying to get rid of, where we're trying to destroy people. I'm going to be talking a little bit more about this whole theme of forgiveness for the next couple of videos, but uh, Elizabeth Brunig, um, who's someone I'll talk about a bit more as a writer for The Atlantic, she talks about how the reminder that it's actually evil actions, that there actually aren't evil people, um, and that by recognizing the, our own capacity for evil, that we also then are able to um, find that forgiveness in others. So there's a strength that it takes <laughs> um, to face our own weaknesses and then therefore have the strength to create that kind of healing. Because here's what happens. If we can't figure out how to just organize the world and so the good guys and the bad guys and whatever your group is, um, I mean, the shirt maybe makes you think about who's your um, bad guys. If we don't have forgiveness, then what we're saying is that these people are permanently wrong, permanently bad. We don't allow for them to change, um, which means we're going to get stuck. We're going to, we, if everyone's already good and bad and it's already sorted out and it's unchangeable, we don't have anywhere to go. That's not a good plan. Um, the other thing is, is untrue. It's really untrue that those are the bad people and these are the good people. 
there really is an illusion here. And I think about, um, I read in a paper a long time ago, and I don't know where to find it again, but it was from Antananas Mogus. Antanas Mogus, the mayor of Bogota in Colombia, and as an academic, and he called this concept delirio social, or social delirium. And he described it as the idea that I'm one of the good guys and um, doing good things, and those are the bad guys, and they do bad things, but those bad guys, they also think they're the good guys, and they think you're the bad guys, and so it's not going to work. We can't be good guys and bad guys and all disagree about who it is. So instead, there's this invitation to sort of recognize our complex shared humanity and would love to talk about that more. Um, this social delirium is what I call the problem. There's something about our kind of incapacity to reconcile the nuance of, of good and bad and us and them. I've made a couple of videos and essays about that, which you're welcome to check out in the links here. Um, but stay tuned because in the next um, set of videos, I'm going to be talking about forgiveness and sharing some really great resources that I found about it. And also apology and self-forgiveness. And I'm going to bring it all home on kind of some ideas on what we can each do to start healing what's going on and get ourselves out of this cycle of feuding and division. Thank you so much and have a great day.